I'm going to review the Lee filter system. I've been using these filters for three years. I've been dragging them with me all around the world. I've taken thousands of photos with them and it's high time that I reviewed these things. My name's Tim Shields. I'm a landscape photographer. And if you like learning about photography, then please consider subscribing to this channel. So first off, the Lee filters come in this uh, little bag, little pouch, and I cram these things into my backpack. I'm, I've been on uh, seven day backpacking trips with this thing. And what I appreciate about the Lee filters is that for the glass filters, they come in a metal box. My metal boxes are actually dented from all the wear and tear and really the abuse that I've given them, but the actual filters themselves are safe and sound inside those boxes, and I like that a lot. I have two different uh, strengths on my filters. I've got the little stopper, which is a six stop filter, and I have the big stopper, which is a 10 stop filter. And of course, we use these generally to smooth out the water. So if you take a look at this picture of a lighthouse, and it's the first picture is taken at a normal shutter speed, look at the water, it doesn't look so great, but now take a look at the second photo, I used a 15 second shutter speed on that second photo and obviously the photo looks a lot more artistic. And with that particular shot, I was using the 10 stop big stopper. Of course, you know how these things work. The glass filter slides down in front of the filter holder. And what I like about these filters is that I can stack two of them. So the first one might be just a standard neutral density filter and the other one could be graduated. So let's talk about graduated neutral density filters for a second. So this is the one that I've been using. This is not glass, it's made with resin. And tragically for me, because I packed it poorly, I do have some scratches on it and I need a new one. But this is a soft grad filter, so it's got a soft definition in between the dark and the light. And I actually find that I don't use these very much. Most of my landscape photography is in the mountains and the horizon line is jagged. And this requires, for the most part, a, a smooth or an even horizon line in order to work properly. So I don't use this very much. And I also find that with my camera, my Nikon D850, it has so much dynamic range that I don't need to use this as much as I used to with my previous cameras. But I really do have to point out that obviously the filter holder will rotate on the lens of the camera. So if your horizon line is not flat, that's not a problem because you can put this into the filter holder and then rotate the whole thing for an uneven horizon line. But I do find that when I have a horizon line that is completely mountainous, it just doesn't work out for me. What I do use all the time are my big stopper and little stopper the six stop and the 10 stop, and I use this to smooth out water. So if you take a look at this image of a mountain in Glacier National Park, take a look at what smoothing out the water does. I should have gone with a longer exposure. This is only something like three seconds, but it definitely improves the look of the photo. I probably should have gone for something like 30 seconds with this shot in order to completely make the water look like glass. Filters are also super useful for time-lapse, especially in situations where you want to smooth out water and not have water moving in an abrupt way. Take a look at this example from the field. I have set up the camera to take a time lapse. I put a six stop neutral density filter on the camera in order to slow down the shutter speed to 2.5 seconds because I don't want the water to look choppy. If the shutter speed was fast, like 1 60th or 1 80th of a second, then the water would be choppy as the time lapse movie is played. So I've got it at two and a half second shutter speed. I have an aperture at F14 so that my foreground and background is all in focus and I have an ISO of 64 in order to pull all of this off. I think it's gonna be a pretty interesting little time lapse. So in this case, the time lapse was cut short because it started raining, but you get the idea that when you use the filters, you can have an extended shutter speed and then smooth out the water of flowing rivers or the waves on an ocean during a time lapse. Let me show you another example from the field where I use a six stop neutral density filter to slow down the water in a very small creek.
I'm going to try and get a slow shutter speed photo of this little waterfall. I'm going to put on the um, neutral density filter over the lens, a six stop. I'm going to slow that shutter speed down to get the movement of the water. First, in order to put on the neutral density filter, I need to screw on the adapter ring. Get that on snug and then put on the actual filter holder. And now grab the six stop neutral density filter. It's extremely opaque. Slide it down the middle. And this is what's going to give me a longer shutter speed because everything is going to appear dark. Okay, let's freeze that right there. I have to mention focus. When you have such an opaque piece of glass in front of your lens, your camera will have a very difficult time finding the autofocus. And I'm not able to see through the viewfinder in order to manually focus it. So here's what I do. I lift the filter up to the very top position in the filter holder, and that leaves the lens free and clear. And once the lens is open like that, then I set the focus point, then I set the composition, and then I push the filter right back down to the bottom of the filter holder, and then I take my photo. So let's resume this video. And it actually looks really good. I just think that it needs to be in portrait mode. The camera needs to be vertical in order to get the leading line of this tiny little stream. But it looks really cool in my viewfinder. And so there is another reason why you might be using these filters, and that is so that you can open your aperture up to its widest setting in order to create some sort of a focus depth of field type of specialty shot. This isn't something that I'm normally looking to do. Usually my shots where I use the filters is involving water and I'm not looking for a shallow depth of field. I'm looking for the longest possible depth of field with most of my photography. So of course I need to point out that when you're using these and you're taking photos with very long exposures, you need to be using either a wired shutter release or using the timer on your camera so you're not touching it. In addition, something to point out is I found out the hard way that you need to close the viewfinder window because if I don't do that, then a small amount of light will leak into the camera and it will put a red color cast over the whole image. But while I'm talking about color cast, you need to be aware that when you are using these filters with long exposure, it does put a bluish type of color cast over the image. So look at this example from one image that was part of a pano. When I looked at this image in the field at Spirit Island in the Canadian Rockies, I was just like, whoa! Like, I didn't think that I was going to be able to recover that photo. But once I imported it into Lightroom and assembled it as part of a panorama and cranked the temperature way, way up, I was able to recover the look of the photo and it turned out very nicely. So I've used these for three years now and I am very, very happy with them. I've traveled with them, as I said, all around the world to so many national parks on so many hikes and I love them. I would not even consider doing any type of landscape photography unless I had my filters with me. So if these are something that uh, you're interested in taking a look at, I put a link to where you can get these filters below in the description. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please leave a comment about what you think. Is Do you agree with my assessment on these filters or not? Let me know because I'm always interested in reading your comments. Thanks so much. Please hit the red subscribe button and the little bell beside it, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.